Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to our May 9th school board meet, regular scheduled school board meeting. Just a few administrative announcements. If you could, please, if you have a cell phone, if you could take the opportunity to silence that so that phone would not be a disruption uh, to the proceedings. Uh, we have with us, and we want to recognize First Sergeant Carter with the Spotsylvania County uh, Sheriff's Department. He's with us tonight, and we thank him for his presence. We have a quorum. All members are present. If we can have the assembly, please rise as we honor America with the Pledge of Allegiance. Dr. Meyer, if you could. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. We're at 1.03. We have our agenda in front of us. We have a motion to adopt the agenda. Hello. Moved by Ms. Blaylock, seconded by uh, Mr. Blaine. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposes? Hearing none, the agenda carries 7-0. No public hearing this evening. However, we are going to be Entertained by the Chancellor High School Jazz Ensemble, Ms. Lennard. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Baker and Dr. Martin. The Chancellor High School Band Program in 2015-2016 Virginia Honor Band and the Chancellor High School Music Program is a current Blue Ribbon Award winner. The Chancellor Band Program will present their spring concert on May 23rd at 7 p.m. And the concert will feature the jazz band, the percussion ensemble, chamber ensembles, concert band, and symphonic band, as well as a combined performance from every band student from both Chancellor High School as well as Chancellor Middle School. Please join us for the free event on May 23rd. And this evening, Chancellor High School Jazz Ensemble, under the direction of Ryan Adair, will present selections of music that they have pre prepared throughout this school year. Over the course of one academic year, the jazz band prepares over 40 pieces of music from a wide variety of styles and genres. Tonight, they will feature several of their upperclassmen, both pre-written and improv solos. Kick back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you. 
Chancellor Jazz Ensemble. If you don't believe me, just watch. Drop some stank on it. Outstanding, outstanding. Is anyone uh, on the board, would they ha have any comments they'd like to share, anyone? They were just awesome, I loved it. And any I wanna say they thank you for livening, up, livening everything up for us. That was awesome, thank you so much. And I think everyone recognized Ryan Adair as the Teacher of the Year for Chancellor High School. All right. Yeah, and a special amen for the uh, livening it up part. Excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Chancellor Johns, Jazz Ensemble. We'll move on to 4.01, the State Forensics Festival winners, Ms. Flanard. Okay, congratulations goes to Katherine Dobbins and her state championship. Katherine Dobbins represented Massaponic High School at the State Forensic Festival and won the state championship in serious interpretation for the second year in a row. This makes Katherine's third state championship, two for forensics and one in theater. If Katherine is in the audience, if she could please come forward. Ms. Flanagan, can you continue with the VSBA Business Honorable Recipient? Yes, ma'am. This evening, we are honoring Mr. Ron Rosner, owner of Rosner Toyota of Fredericksburg, for his dedication to the students of Spotsylvania County. We appreciate his support of our literacy initiatives. We are proud to recognize Mr. Rosner as a Virginia School Board Association 2016 Business Honor Roll Recipient. Mr. Rosner, if you would please come forward at this time so we may present you with your certificate and resolution signed by Spotsylvania County School Board. Thank you, Mr. Rosner. And Mrs. Flanard, can you continue with 4.03, the VAASL Librarian of the Year recipient? Thank you. At the Regional Conference for the Virginia Association of School Librarians, Sarah Downey, Freedom Middle School's librarian, was selected as the Rappahannock Regional School Librarian of the Year for 2016. The purpose of this award is to recognize outstanding VAASL school librarians. The seven regional winners will be candidates for the VAASL State Level Librarian of the Year. 
the state level recipient will be announced at the annual convention in October. Congratulations to Ms. Downey on receiving this prestigious designation. And we wish you luck at the next level. And will you continue with the Skills USA state competition results? Yes, ma'am. On April 16th, 29 SCTC students participated at the Skills USA States competition. Of those students, three have qualified for the Skills USA national competition in June in Louisville, Kentucky. Three students were able to join us this evening. We have Joshua Haley, first place for HVAC. If Joshua could come up, please. For first place computer programming, we have Nico Cover. For first, pl first place technical computer applications, Justin Piercy. I do believe. that we have some teachers that are here supporting our students as well. Mr. Hunt, Mr. Lan, and Mr. Tate, I saw in the audience. And if we could have the families of our students that support our students through all of their adventures, if you could stand to be recognized, please. And those are the students that um, we knew that were coming. I did have a couple that RSVP that they would be able to come, but I didn't see them in the audience. If we have any other students here, we do not. Okay, thank you. And will you continue with the fine arts recognitions? Sure. This month, we're displaying artwork in the school board office from four of our schools. These schools are Battlefield Elementary, art teacher Frankie Wheeler, Lee Hill Elementary School, art teacher Cynthia Daniels, Livingston Elementary, art teacher Diana Malott, Spotswood Elementary, art teacher Aaron Rogers, and Spotsylvania High School, art teachers Amy Lacerna and Frank Carr. We celebrated these students previously with certificates of appreciation at a reception held in their honor prior to this meeting. And we'll conclude with the Superintendent's Award. May Superintendent Award winner is Rebecca Creed. <laughs> Rebecca is a fifth grade student at Courthouse Road Elementary School. Her art teacher is Carly May. Her artwork is hanging in the Superintendent's office for the month of May. I was going to ask, but she's already there. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And I do see that Rebecca has a nice range of support from her family. If you could stand to be recognized this evening. Thank you and congratulations again, Rebecca.
Ms. Flinard, thank you uh, for overseeing the many recognitions and awards that our students and employees of this great school division have managed to muster and that's just the ones that we've recognized. There's so many unsung heroes that uh, we would love to have the opportunity to recognize for the great work that they do each and every day in Spotsylvania County Schools. Moving on to 5.01 public comments. Dr. Martin, if you could please read the instruction. Good evening. The public comment segment of our board meetings is a time to receive recommendations, suggestions, concerns, and comments from the general public. Each speaker is allotted five minutes, and we ask that they clearly state the name, address, and or voting district for the board. A speaker may request additional time from the board should one's five-minute allotment expire. We ask that you keep your comments focused on the issues and that all speakers maintain a level of decorum and mutual respect for one another. Mr. Chairman, we do not have any speakers signed up at this time. Thank you. If there are anyone in the audience that would like to address the board, uh, please come forward. Is there anyone that would like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll close public comments and move on to 5.02 board member comments. We're going to start this evening with Mr. Blaine and then follow with uh, Dr. Meyer. Uh, just have a few uh, comments attended a VSBA uh, workshop two or three weeks ago. In fact, Jim and I went down, I, I went with Jim. Uh, but we were talking about uh, and got exposed to, at least from my viewpoint, uh, zero tolerance and why it's not very good. And we had a very interesting speaker, Judge uh, Stephen Teske, who's the uh, chief judge at the, in the family court in Clayton County, Georgia, and he, he was speaking about his experience and how important it is to keep kids in school. And when they have problems, uh, you need to, we need to figure out a way how to keep them in school. And uh, if, if we do that, we're gonna have much better results. And he spoke about his experience as he tried to work against the zero tolerance, which we do not know, use, by the way which I was uh, thankful for. But while there, uh, we, I had a chance to rub shoulders with a person who uh, has an office in uh, Richmond about restorative justice, and I had learned a little bit about this earlier in the year. Had a chance to learn how we're, we're doing it in uh, some of our local districts, actually, and I know that our own school board is has been, or our school staff has been looking at it, but it's a very interesting program where we try to get kids back in school, and I think that uh, I'd like to see us continue to look at that. Dr. Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Blaine spoke on the, the impact of uh, zero tolerance policies which don't work. The t conference was very, very beneficial. We brought back information shared with uh, Dr. Baker, who will be sharing with the board uh, that information. I also want to take a shout out to our middle schools. Uh, Battlefield Middle School won first and second place for the middle school great debate, and uh, participation was excellent and uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, listening to the, the presentation and being part of the uh, final judging panel. And congratulations to Battlefield Middle School. Uh, I think others are going to speak to other topics, so I'm going to pass on, on that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. We'll have uh, Ms. Playlock and then Mr. Twig. Thank you, Mr. Braswell. Just a couple of things. I want to first uh, say a big congratulations to the newly named Teacher of the Year for Spotsylvania County, Ms. Carolyn Kleinart. Um, we honored her Friday night at the Sage Banquet for those of you who couldn't attend, we honored her along with many others in the county that were very well deserving of a very high honor. But she walked away with a big prize, and we look forward to supporting her on the next level. Um, that was Friday evening, and I just I normally try not to go over everything we visited because it kind of bores the audience, but I, I'm going to have to give a, a big shout out to Chancellor High School. I attended their performance of Big Fish Saturday evening with my daughter, and it just truly is amazing the talent we have in this county and the 
teachers and the um, fine arts programs in Spotsylvania County are truly second to none. And as we're working on budgets and you think about where we put our money, if you don't think the whole child is important, just attend something outside a classroom like uh, a play such as Big Fish, which was very well done. Uh, a lot of those children were here this evening with a jazz band, and it was just so nice to see the well-rounded child in action. But really, that's all I have. Thank you for everything. Congratulations again to our Teacher of the Year. Thank you, Ms. Blaylock. Mr. Twick. Lots of events going on. Uh, a few that uh, I got involved with recently are uh, the academic awards at Spotsy High. Uh, lots of talent uh, coming out of that high school and a lot of things going on. And uh, it was exciting to see uh, all of them win their certificates and awards. I also uh, took, the, uh, took the opportunity to end, uh, uh, attend my first prom in several decades. I won't tell you exactly how many. Uh, just to visit, see how it works decades later. But uh, at any rate, uh, I, I was very excited to see Spotsylvania High School uh, uh, at their own high school turn that place. It's a great school by design, but they turned it into a marvelous party area. I mean, decorations, uh, the teachers were totally supportive, lots of food. Uh, the youth seemed to be having a lot of fun. Uh, I was excited to see all of that. And uh, what's more is they saved uh, lots of thousands of dollars just by hosting it in their high school. So I applaud them for that as well. Also, uh, uh, the Lion King, Don Shelley uh, and my wife and I uh, enjoyed, uh, and the three of us were able to enjoy the Lion King at Brock Elementary, fifth graders and fourth graders. My, be my favorite part of the evening was watching that little kid uh, on the floor in the front there keep up, the sl keep up with the sl about 50 slides. That was fun to see. Uh, uh, he had to read every word of script. That, that was fun to watch. Uh, River Bend, Miss Kleimart, Freedom Middle, uh, we applaud you and thank you for your service and all of the teachers. Uh, enjoyed, uh, uh, had a great event and a great meal, and I was sitting at a great table with uh, the Livingston Elementary folks, so we had a good time. Um, uh, also, noteworthy, uh, at Livingston Elementary, uh, our school nurse, uh, Miss Sue Stover, she was named the 2016 Nurse of the Year, and uh, so she, it was a complete surprise to her to receive that award, and, and uh, they had an assembly. It was just a fun time, and uh, uh, we appreciate uh, everything all of our nurses do. She even was uh, an act, played an active role in helping a parent after they dropped their child off about six, seven weeks ago uh, receive some emergency medical treatment that this parent needed. That was exciting. And lastly, the uh, uh, Livingston Elementary also pursued and obtained a $500 grant from Walmart, which they uh, used to create, toward creating a running track. And uh, Miss Teresa Baxter was the grant writer from that school and uh, they too uh, had a celebra celebration uh, type of event. I thought that was all wonderful and uh, uh, I applaud them for taking care of themselves where uh, sometimes uh, financial resources don't come from other, other uh, uh, means, by other means. So uh, uh, special thanks to Ms. Baxter and the entire team there as well. So uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, recently seeing some of these events and uh, uh, we do have a lot of talent and a lot of quality teachers and, uh, and, and service providers in our county uh, and I applaud everybody for that. Thank you for your time. Mr. Twig, thank you for your comments. I will have uh, Ms. Gramp and then we'll finish with Ms. Shelley. I just want to update everyone on the ongoing budget process which is currently on our end a bit paused. Uh, we have a Board of Supervisors meeting tomorrow night, and then we will, later on in this meeting, confirm our work session and hope to conclude um, our budget process shortly and vote on the budget at the next meeting. So uh, that is just the update on where we stand on that. Ms. Graham, thank you. Ms. Shelley? Thank you. Um, once again, just congratulate to all the award recipients for this evening. I um, 
want to say a happy belated Mother's Day to all of the mothers, and I see many of you out there and here. Um, also, um, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and since we did not meet right before that, did not get the opportunity to tell all the teachers and all the school staff, once again, how much you are appreciated. Um, if it weren't for you, um, being dealing with our students and, and with the, our students every single day, um, we wouldn't be doing the job that we're doing here. So thank you very much for all of that. Um, this is the, I mean, we've only got a few weeks left of school, so all of the wrap-up is happening. Just kind of remind everyone, this is the time of year with a lot of the fine arts, our, our concerts are happening at this time of year. If you can get out to any of the elementary, middle, or high school concerts, you will be um, entertained and um, just amazed at the talent that our students have. Also, um, it is graduation season. I know we've had some proms, as uh, Mr. Twig said he's attended, and then we have awards coming up and all sorts of senior activities and all sorts of high school activities that are happening. So um, we're going to be recognizing our seniors quite a bit in the, in the upcoming weeks. And then also, on our school's website, you will be able to see anyone out there who has kindergartners or upcoming kindergartners. Kindergarten registration is on the website, as is uh, summer school information. So if you need any information on either of those, they are all on the website. And with that, um, I will finish my comments. Thank you, Mr. Braswell. Thank you, Ms. Shelley. I'll just make a few comments. One, uh, as Ms. Gramp had mentioned, the we're at the precipice of uh, receiving the final numbers for our budget so that we can do our work. Uh, remain confident that uh, uh, we, with the Board of Supervisors, will do what's in the best interest of Spotsylvania County Schools and its citizens and children uh, that we are committed to providing the best education that they can possibly receive. Uh, so we uh, remain hopeful and we look forward to uh, the decisions being made in the next day uh, to provide the school division the monies that are needed in order to do just that. Uh, we also want to make uh, the board members mindful, uh, again, as a reminder that at Cortland High School tomorrow at the baseball field, uh, they will be offering a school board appreciation night. And again, once again, yours truly will be throwing out the first pitch, it will look good. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Twig said he'll judge, but uh, but at any rate, uh, we're having that uh, that event, and we're excited about that. And so, just come on out and uh, uh, you know have a little fun, watch a little bit of baseball, which is still America's pastime, and uh, allow uh, uh, the baseball team at Cortland High School to show appreciation to this board for the work that it does. And and I don't uh, say that lightly. Oh my peers as they sit here across this diocese uh, have done tremendous work this year in uh, advocating for our schools and uh, being in position to offer support to staff in any way that they can. And so I appreciate all the contributions each and every one of you have done this far in the budget year. That being said, we'll move on to 5.03. Superintendent's report, Dr. Baker. Thank you, Mr. Braswell, and uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, I wanted to uh, um, echo several things that uh, different board members had commented on. I, I wanted to begin with the, um, the performance this evening from Chancellor High School's Jazz Ensemble, and you know, from here it's an interesting perspective because the audience can watch just a few, but I get to see all of the audience, and to watch heads, you know, kind of bobbing and uh, you know, knees, uh, knees vibrating, a lot of movement was going on. Um, they certainly got us off on the, on the right foot. And uh, again, a lot of talent there. And, and as other board members have talked about, it, during the season there are so many different performances that, that we could go to something every night and miss quite a bit. But in addition to Big Fish, which I saw, which was outstanding by a Chancellor High School, um, Spotsylvania High School performed uh, The Crucible. And, a very difficult piece and did an outstanding job with uh, a very sophisticated 
uh, challenging material, and um, I enjoyed that. And the Sage Bank, again, gives us an opportunity, especially during Teacher Appreciation Week, to thank our teachers who are being recognized. But I think in another way, it enables us to um, celebrate what I believe we have in terms of riches, deep pockets of quality uh, educators in this school division. And that gives us an opportunity, while we are singling out a few, to say thank you to all that are making invaluable contributions to um, our students each and every day. And this week I know that our schools, many of our schools, began today uh, with their SOL testing schedules. And so I know I want to thank our principals that are here and those who are not here for their leadership uh, and their focus in continuing to see achievement rise um, over the next several weeks. But I know how hard everyone has worked and prepared. And so I wanted to acknowledge that for the board. Um, there has been a real keen focus on, on the continuous improvement. Um, and I know a lot of uh, good work has gone into that. Mr. Blaine mentioned um, the, uh, the whole concept of zero tolerance and restorative justice as a practice. Uh, just a reminder to the school board that uh, our leadership learning exchange uh, is the last full week in June. And uh, one of the strands that will run through that will be uh, uh, equity as it pertains to discipline and how to, uh, we will have sessions that will support uh, alternative methods uh, to traditional discipline and ways to keep our students engaged in the classroom. And for us with our um, teaching and learning framework really about how do we continue to build relationships with all of our students and, and personalize learning for them so that school is a place that they want to come and they want to stay and they want to achieve. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, I wanted to remind the board that um, as you saw some of the folks that were honored at SAGE and then I, I heard about our nurse out at Livingston, great recognitions. There will be additional recognitions over the next few school board meetings where we will take a moment to recognize some of those individuals as well here at the board level. So uh, that is all I have at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Baker. Move on to special reports, uh, board committee report 6.01. Do we have any board committee reports, anyone? <coughs> Seeing none, 6.02, K-12 literacy update, Mr. Mudd. Good evening, Chairman Braswell, members of the board, Dr. Baker and Dr. Martin. Um, being jo I'm joined this evening by Shonda Collins Ritchie and Carol Ann Luter from Brock Road Elementary School and Wilderness Elementary School. And this evening, we have an update for you on some work that we've been doing throughout our division this year um, in the area of, of K-12 literacy. This school year, um, a committee of, of 27 teachers and administrators has been established um, to look at K-12 literacy in Spotsylvania County. Um, I work alongside Christine Lentz Johnson, Johnston, um, Jennifer Baleko, and Deb Sikursky in our work in leading and organizing that committee and the work of our committee. Um, our primary focus, of course, is literacy in Spotsylvania, and we use the teaching and learning framework um, as our anchor. As you know and have been reading about the teaching and learning framework this year, um, that's a guiding document essentially for how we do business in Spotsylvania County in regards to teaching and learning. So our work with the Literacy Committee has been to establish how we, um, how we work in the area of literacy and how that aligns to our teaching and learning framework. A big part of our work as a um, committee and group has been to draft a literacy document um, for K-12 literacy instruction so that we can, we can take a look at um, best approaches to instruction throughout the division. Our draft document um, essentially outlines research and best practices in literacy. It is organized, um, as we're working on it, is organized by elementary, middle, and high school. Um, in, in looking at how we look at literacy instruction at each of those levels. And it addresses um, how we approach instruction in regards to whole group, small group, and independent instructional approaches that should be taking place in a typical literacy block, kindergarten through 12th grade. Supporting the work of the committee this year has also been our Partners in Literacy program. Our Partners in Literacy program primarily supports our struggling readers, which is certainly a, a, an important focus of our work in the K-12 Literacy Committee as well. 
Um, so alongside our K-12 plan that we've been working on this year, a concurrent plan has also been drafted um, that has worked to target two schools um, specifically. Um, and the funds that were donated by Mr. Rosner, who we recognized earlier um, this evening um, with his generous donation, targeted um, Brock Road and Wilderness Elementary Schools. And in just a moment, I'll be inviting those principals to come up to share with you a little bit about the work that they will be doing. On this screen, I'm not going to read this entire list to you, but you can see it's a fairly extensive list of materials that the um, that the donation has been able to afford us to purchase for these two schools. Uh, what I want to highlight is on the right hand side, not only the picture of our loading dock when all those materials started to come in um, and we started to disseminate them out to the schools, um, but particularly the professional learning component I want to highlight. Um, all the materials that you see referenced on the left hand side are supported by professional learning on the right hand side. Um, we want to make sure that we're not just putting materials in the hands and loading up teachers' classrooms with things, um, but we're bringing those things to life by providing them high quality professional learning. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Collins Ritchie up to the podium, who's going to share a little bit about the work um, that's starting at Brock Road, and she'll be followed by Carol Ann Luter. Good evening, uh, members of the board, Dr. Baker and Dr. Martin. How are you all this evening? Um, at Brock Road, our school is very excited, our community is very excited about the opportunities that we've been afforded through the resources that have come into Brock Road and also the uh, professional development that has already started. Uh, some of the resources that we, uh, the picture that you saw, some of the resources that we have received um, are targeted at professional learning for teachers, one of those being the continuum of literacy learning. And we've been working with that uh, resource all year, but to have the opportunity to get the in-depth training that comes with that, um, our teachers have used that as a vital part of the conversations we're having about students and what their learning needs are as they move through the levels of uh, Fontes and Spinell Fontes and Pinnell reading levels and exactly what the, their learning needs are. Um, another resource that we receive um, is a scholastic guided reading fiction and nonfiction short reads. Um, this tool came to us about two weeks ago and we've already had our first professional learning uh, session with this. The teachers were very excited to get that uh, resource in their hands because they're used to doing guided reading uh, in their small groups with books and this is a one page short read uh, similar to maybe like an article that students can read and what makes it unique is that it's on their instructional reading level so it gives the teacher an opportunity to do differentiated instruction on an ongoing basis with something that's not as intimidating for students to read and this teachers have already gotten their hands on and excited about using it especially as we prepare for the uh, standards of learning assessment um, well it's starting tomorrow at Brock Road one of the other um, pieces that we feel we needed at Brock Road was the targeted intervention. We are focused on core instruction at Brock Road, but through uh, some of the resources that have come into our building, one of those being the level literacy intervention system. We already had this resource in our building, but when it came out a few years ago, a lot of the teachers didn't receive the corresponding training. So we had the resource, but without the proper way that this resource should be used. So we are very excited to have the opportunity for that training to be uh, given to us um, in the month of June. The teachers are already have the resources in their classrooms, and again, they are starting interventions with with the students based on the training that they've had, but to have that training that's coming from the people who provided that resource is exciting to them. And one last thing that we have at Brock Road, and we started using Lexia Core 5 uh, reading um, in 2015 in about September, and we've seen some good uh, results from the use of that, and we were excited when we found out that that could be included in the grant because what Lexia does is it's looking at skill development of students, at our readers, and as it looks at the skill development of readers and they're working through the program, it also provides the data-driven action plan back to teachers to say, this is where this student is struggling, we need an intervention here. So while the teacher is working, continuing to work in guided reading, that computer program is working with and diagnosing some of the deficits that students have and then it sends a message to the teacher to say, hey, Johnny needs help with this one. So we are very excited to know that that resource will be um, part of our uh, system next year also. Thank you.
one thing about going last is I could say ditto because Shauna did a very nice job covering everything. But I just like to highlight at Wilderness Elementary School, we are very excited about the resources and materials that we will be having. And I wanted to impress upon you that it's not just one more thing that the teachers will be having, but a way that we can align everything that we've been working on and doing in the goals that we have as far as core instruction, working on ways within the classroom to provide remediation for our tier two students, as well as provide a cohesive discussion uh, vertically throughout the building K through five. We've been working very hard on running records and analyzing the errors that students make and then dialoguing about what that means and the characteristics that students should have on various levels of reading. So all of this, the materials that are there and the, the training that's coming from those that have done the research, those who have written the books and those that are providing these resources to our teachers, not only in June, but hoping that we can have follow up if webinars or discussions so it's not just a one time, but a way for us to grow and learn throughout the year and to benefit. So thank you very much. So our next steps in moving forward um, in our K-12 work this year, and of course we heard our two examples from um, using our, our targeted funds this year from our two elementary schools, but we do, will be continuing to work on our draft um, document in preparation for a fall rollout um, for the K-12 um, document, uh, literacy document. Um, but we'll also be looking to continue supporting our, our target schools, Brock Road and Wilderness, as they um, continue to work on um, and, and learn from the professional learning experience and then really implementing the materials and providing support where needed. And then as we roll out um, those initiatives at those schools, as well as the K-12 documents, um, looking to continue um, using those documents as really a living document um, and continually re review our work, um, listen to teacher feedback, and see what other supports we can put in place for our teachers. At this time, um, either the principals and myself would be happy to entertain any questions that any of you may have. Uh, first, I want to go ahead and give Dr. Baker an opportunity to uh, ask a few questions and then we'll give the board members. Go ahead. If I might, I, I wanted to, uh, again, thank you all for, I guess I'm thanking you for accepting <laughs> this opportunity uh, with with the grant, the generous grant. And um, there were some, sometimes from, I know from a board perspective, you hear some terms and some language, and, and I'm going to ask you to to give some additional explanation to that. But the first is, uh, I'm going to ask a question that it may be a burning question for the board, it may not. But once all of the, uh, the materials have been purchased, the professional learning is taking place, how will we know that we have been successful? What will tell us that um, the, uh, the execution of this grant will have uh, given us a significant benefit in terms of student learning. Sure. Um, I will start, and if these ladies have anything to add, they're welcome to, to come up and, and add. Um, but through our, our continued work, and actually addressed in the, the K-12 document too, or are the, um, the, way, the various ways that we do assess um, in literacy. Um, and so in capturing our data uh, using the, our benchmark assessment system as well as running records, um, really for a couple of years now, we have some good baseline data. Um, once we get the professional learning components in the, um, at, at these two schools in particular, um, part of that professional learning will be um, the, the experts who will be coming to deliver um, the professional development to the teachers will be sharing with us how to best capture um, data and what to look for in regards to um, how the teachers will be implementing the, um, the work or the materials, um, per, per, but really the instruction that they're implementing, and then how to capture that information so that really we can best articulate student growth and progress to our parents. Um, and really um, demonstrate growth. But using that, we will be able to see, um, using our baseline data from the, the, the past years and, or more and more, uh, we'll be able to see um, what growth these two schools in particular um, are able um, to make um, moving forward. I don't know if you need, want to add anything or I capture all of it. And um, two other things. Uh, you talked about an assessment called running records. Mm -hmm. If you can uh, explain what running records are, because I think the board heard that several times as a way that we 
provide ongoing assessment, and then also the idea of tier two instruction. I, I know was something that came up that I'm not sure uh, every board member would know exactly what we're sure. referring to with that. Sure, absolutely. So in regards to running records, um, I think the best way to describe a running record, uh, when we look to, um, to instruct in literacy, uh, we are constantly putting literature in front of students, and that's what we do. We um, have lots of different materials that we can use with students and lots of different ways to, to see how they're doing. We do have our benchmark assessment system, which captures some very formal data at certain intervals during the school year. The best way to describe a running record is a more informal assessment that teachers do one-on-one -on -one with a student and it's like taking a temperature in a, in a student where you're, you're do, having a little bit of a, of a dipstick in assessment in, in having a student read a short passage um, or, or short part of a story that they're reading where the teacher is monitoring the student's accuracy in how they're reading words as well as their comprehension once they've read, did they understand what they've read. And the teacher uh, has been making instructional decisions all along the way. Um, of where they best want to instruct that student in, in, literac in, in literacy. Um, and so the running record confirms for the teacher that they are instructing them at the right place, or it will tell the teacher that they need to um, move the student to another group, uh, maybe move to a, a, um, a, a higher reading group, um, or it may say that the student is struggling at that level and the teacher might want to consider moving the student to um, get more support in, in a different reading group as well. In regards to tier, tiered instruction, um, you will hear a lot of times when we talk about tiers um, one, two, and three um, instruction. When we talk tier one, that's what we refer to as our core instruction, so um, instruction that we provide to all of our students um, in using our best practices that we have and, and the materials that we have um, to best meet those students' needs. When students are not able to be successful in tier one core instruction, we then move them into what we consider a tier two level of instruction, where they receive both the core instruction in addition to some intervention, um, typically provided by the classroom teacher a couple of days a week to support and provide them with a little bit more um, that that student may need. Um, you may also hear tier three instruction, and that's our most intensive instruction that we would provide a, st a student who might be struggling, where again, they'll get core instruction, and then they will get a daily um, intervention in addition to their regular core instruction with the teacher. Dr. Baker, any other questions? Okay, uh, Ms. Blaylock. Thank you, Mr. Braswell, and thank you. Thank all three of you for a very nice presentation. Um, and it's a good time to, again, thank Mr. Rosner for the generous donation to get us started. And having 17 elementaries, even with that very large amount, we can't cover all of our area right away. So just help me and, and the public to understand how we pick the two schools to target and how this will ripple on to the other 15 schools Absolutely. that were waiting in the wings. Yes, and we are very appreciative of, of that donation and, um, and wish to continue to work with our partners. Um, in regards to how these two schools in particular were selected, um, we did use um, available data that we have in regards to our reading instruction data as well as SOL data. Um, and we looked at all of our schools, all 17 schools, and we looked at um, supports that schools currently have or may not have and we looked at the need in regards to the data being presented to us. So Brock Road and Wilderness were selected because there were some areas um, in the area of literacy uh, where they needed some additional support um, where they didn't have that support. Um, whereas other schools that may have had perhaps a greater need than Rock Road or Wilderness may, all, may be getting support already. So it was, it was looking at, at the bigger picture, what supports we have in place, who needs supports um, in the way of materials and professional learning, and of course we all do, and we'd all love to have more. As you said, there, wasn't, there was only a finite amount of money, um, but that they were chosen based on um, that need, and we had a number of folks looking at the data and, and making that selection. And let's say we had the success we planned to have. 
how will we be able to spread this out throughout the county? Will it just be more funding or will there be a way that we can share learned practices at that time? Well, there's, there's absolutely a, a, always an opportunity for sharing practices. Um, we have, are fortunate that at these schools, they have um, coaches available. Um, in addition to their reading coach, there's also a teaching and learning coach that these two schools have. Um, and those coaches are part of a greater network of coaching that is critical to what we do in regards to instruction in Spotsylvania. Um, so as those coaches also participate in the training, they will be, then be a, an integral part of, of seeing that training through and then helping to share the wealth, so to speak, with others that didn't have the benefit of the, of the training from the presenters that we're bringing into the division. Um, one other component is because we have um, a, a pretty high concentration of materials and professional learning, we'll be able to fall back on the, on the feedback of the teachers as well as the administrators at these two schools to see what has shown us the greatest impact, how do we know and why, and then what might we be able to um, continue adding to um, the toolbox, so to speak, at other schools um, that may not have some of these materials or may not have had this level of professional learning. Um, as Dr. Baker asked earlier, using that data to compare will be really important as we implement and see this through. Oh, Dr. Meyer. Just had a thought as you were explaining that. Is there any redundancy then with Title I remedial reading? Is there any redundancy between this program and, and Title I? Hmm. <clears throat> Title I, um, the Title I schools may have some of these materials. Um, if you're asking, are we duplicating what is, is, has already happened or is happening in a Title I school, I would say um, not necessarily. Um, some of those schools may have, may have those materials, may have had some of this training, um, but the Title I piece that Title I has that these schools won't is there are additional human resources in a Title I building that don't exist in Brock Road or, or at Wilderness. Um, but those coaches, as I mentioned earlier, are going to be really critical to um, implementing the professional learning and really helping teachers to see it through. Um, and like I said, there, there would be some overlap, but it's not a total duplication of what may be happening at a Title I school. Ms. Shelley. Thank you. Um, first, I want to applaud for everything that you're doing. It's, it sounds amazing. Um, I, I want to, again, say thank you for the professional learning, that when the new materials are coming in, that the teachers are learning how to use them and how to interpret the data that they will be getting from the information that the, what they, the information they will be gathering from all of that. So I think that's wonderful. The um, Lexia program. Uh, um, I think you had mentioned that to me before about it, but being able to just tell the teach tell this teacher that Johnny's struggling with main idea or whatever it may be, that's huge. That is that is um, probably one of the the best things I've I've heard in a very long time. And um, you said this is more for the tier two learners. Is that what you had said that's, or just no? Okay. No. You want to speak? The, the Lexia component um, is for everybody. Okay. Um, there is professional learning that will come along with that as well. We'll have some um, some support from the um, folks at Lexia who will be a big part of helping with implementation and and um, helping teachers to understand the data that they're seeing. Um, but that is provided for everyone. Um, the tier two component, feel free to come on up if you want. Um, but the reports that a teacher will get in regards to Lexia, um, tell a teacher where a child may be struggling. So where one student um, may be doing well in, in a certain area and that core instruction with the support of Lexia is, is all that student will need, um, the data might tell a teacher um, that they might need to spend additional time on a certain topic or skill that they picked up in the Lexia component. And so in that regard, it would become tier two for that child. But Lexia would be, will be available to all students at both schools. Anything else? All right. Making sure I'm <laughs> capturing it all. 
Okay, so the L, thank you, the LLI Kits Leveled Literacy Intervention, um, a wonderful resource um, for, for intervention for our students and all of our schools already have um, a number of, of LLI kits in their buildings already. Um, this money that was donated was able to fill some holes at these two schools where they see a need where they didn't have the materials. In addition to that, the professional learning comes along with that, which is, as we know, is very important. Um, the LLI is uh, our materials that can be used um, if a teacher feels the child, uh, if it's a tier two student and they need additional support, they could use LLI. LLI also could be used for a tier three student as well. And our, I'm, I'm um, guessing that these materials are also being used for our ELL students in these in in your schools. No, so, yes, awesome. Yes, any any student where um, you know it's kind of like adding to the toolbox for the teachers. Yeah. So any student where a teacher feels um, that they need additional support, and LLI is a great um, support for what they think the student needs, then LLI would be used for that student. Okay, well thank you. And I just told Dr. Baker that I wanna come back to Spotsy. So <laughs> this sounds awesome, thank you. Ms. Shelley, thank you. I just had a, I think most of my questions have been answered in terms of how we targeted the schools and uh, some uh, illustration of how Lexia works and for the feedback. I'm a big believer in feedback. But you said something, Mr. Mudd, that uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to elaborate on because it got me excited when you said education to life. Now, in this process, how do you visualize it? How do you bring, how does this bring education to life for the students? And are you referring specifically to the K-12 literacy document or the, or the materials through the um, funding that we received the materials to the funding okay um, so in when teachers teachers have already been putting into practice um, many of the best practices that we are looking for um, and that uh, research tells us our best practices and so Spotsylvania as we know our teachers are fantastic and they're doing a great job with their implementation with what we have um, there are materials like uh, research does with research comes materials to match the research so um, there are materials like what we've purchased that great that um, provide greater support to teachers and provide them with with uh, more resources to to pull out of that toolbox when they think that when there's a need um, or to help them with their core instruction and so it in a lot of ways as Ms. Luter had mentioned um, it's not something, these materials are not going to feel like one more thing to these teachers because they, it's supporting instruction that's already occurring. What it's doing is bringing to life using these materials um, with, with a big research base behind it and particularly that professional learning part. Um, it's really helping teachers to, um, to have a greater sense of what they can gather um, and use to help support instruction with their students. Um, and right now, they they have things certainly at their disposal. Um, this is this is uh, a lot of what we've purchased is kind of the latest and greatest, um, and not just a, a shiny new thing, but really high quality materials that we already have to a degree in our division. We've just been able to provide a, to a greater level at these two schools. So, from from what I heard. Uh, the way this brings educational life is more of a train the trainer uh, opportunity so that the teacher would have uh, greater resources mm -hmm. to be able to employ based off of the needs of the children. So is, is, is that, did I oversimplify it or is it, please correct me if I did. I think the best example that would support your, what you're stating there um, is uh, our continuum of learning uh, professional learning and some materials that the schools are getting in regards to that continuum of learning is kind of like our guidebook for high quality um, literacy instruction. Um, teachers are aware of the continuum. We have the continuum of learning um, already out in our schools. Um, through, this, through this funding, we're able to bring in the trainers um, who work for the folks that wrote that, um, that 
book for us, or not just for us, for everyone, um, they're able to learn directly from the expert. So um, that example is one way that kind of brings to life something that somebody could have read or gone out on their own, or we certainly have been bringing into our own professional in-house learning here. Um, but this is bringing in the experts um, beyond Spotsylvania who are who are sitting next to the authors of these books and these researchers and, and sharing um, a great deal of wisdom with, with us. And we're really excited about that. Um, and and it'll, have, it'll help the teachers really bring to life what they've been hearing and reading, um, but in a different way through the, through the trainer. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Any, I don't believe any other questions, no other questions. I wanna thank you all for your presentation uh, was very informative, and uh, I'm, I, I like that that's the way we do it. <laughs> and I do believe it does bring education to life, and that's huge uh, from my perspective, because if children don't see the application, then they can't retain it. They have to see a correlation between life and the life lessons that we're teaching them in the classroom, so thank you. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, 7.01 and 7.02, Dr. Martin. On the consent agenda this evening are the minutes of the April 25th, 2016 regular meeting and donations which are usual and customary. Staff asked that the consent agenda be approved as presented. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda as um, then the motion. Thank you, Ms. Shelley. Ms. Shelley makes a motion to, uh, to accept a, a consent agenda. Second. Second by Mr. Twig. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposes? Hearing none, the motion carries 7-0. Moving on to 8.01, approval date to replace the May 2nd work session and revised date to adopt the fiscal year 2017 school board operating budget. Dr. Baker. Thank you. I have the, the loan action item for this evening. On April 12th, uh, the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors adopted the uh, FY 2017 county and school budgets. And at that time, there was a discussion about the possible allocation of additional one-time funds to the school division by the Board of Supervisors during their meeting on April 26th. Following the supervisor's action on April 26th, it is anticipated that the Board of Supervisors will take action on this matter during their next meeting, uh, which would be tomorrow, May the 10th. Uh, our staff is requesting that the school board approves the date of Friday, May 20th, 2016, beginning at 4 o'clock p.m. to conduct a budget work session so that the board can take action on its FY 2017 budget during the regular meeting on May 23rd, 2016. And so uh, the I appreciate all of the board's feedback on this date. I know it was tough to find a date given the extension to our budget season, but we're very appreciative. I know our staff is, and I'm sure the board as well, of the supervisor's considerations going forward, and we are uh, hopeful that uh, perhaps after tomorrow's meeting there will be additional funding for the school board to consider in the adoption of the FY 2017 budget. So the uh, recommendation is for the board to approve that Friday, May 20th, 4 o'clock p.m. work session. I'll move the recommended action. I'll second. Moved by Mr. Blaine, seconded by Ms. Blaylock. Any discussion? I just have a quick question. Go ahead, Ms. Shelley. I had on my calendar something for Monday the 16th. Is that still on the calendar? That was probably, that might have just been for me. There was nothing on the 16th. Okay, good, then I will take that off. I just want to make sure, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? Call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposes? Hearing none, motion carries 7-0. Informational items, uh, 9.01 and 9.02. Usual and customary. Moving on to 10.01, unfinished business. Any unfinished business? Unfinished business. Hearing none, move to 10.02, new business. Any new business? I have a, a piece of new business I'd like to address with the board briefly just to hear uh, or ascertain the interest. Uh, we have every year and have had 
the great debate, which has turned out to be a fabulous educational experience for our middle schoolers. And I was talking with Dr. Baker uh, at the SAGE Awards, and I think uh, an event that would be really intriguing for our young people to engage in, possibly at the high school and middle school level, is a chess competition uh, to build uh, analytical skill and uh, give uh, another form of competition for our young people to have a division-wide or county-wide chess tournament. So I uh, bring that up to my fellow board members to hear their opinions on that, and, uh, and then we can possibly, if there's enough interest, ask staff to look into the feasibility of implementing such a thing. Ms. Shelley. Well, I know many of our schools have chess clubs, so I think that might be a really fun idea for the students to be able to get together and work each other's brains. Thank you, Michelle. Anyone else? Ms. Blaylock? It sounds like a, a good idea. I'm willing to look into it, um, find out maybe how many chess clubs we have, and do some research. I don't think it would hurt. It gets my support. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, Dr. Baker? I'll just share with the board that I know that when we spoke of it briefly, I, I think that it would be good for um, our staff to, to check in with our uh, school sponsors at uh, many of our schools that have chess clubs or have that uh, opportunity as an extracurricular activity because I'm sure that they may already be engaged in some competitions. So the idea of being able to create an opportunity as a division-wide competition, uh, again, to promote the skill and to promote the, the critical thinking, as you said, I think is something worth at least looking into and researching. So if we can uh, have an opportunity to, to check in with our school principals and how they currently um, provide that opportunity school by school, then we'll be able to come back so we have a good baseline of where we are. Okay. Hey, thank you, Dr. Baker. Uh, any other new business? Any other new business? Okay, hearing none, we'll uh, move uh, to 11.01. Uh, closed meeting. Let it be resolved that this, the board conduct a closed meeting for the following purposes. Consideration of candidates for employment, assignment, promotion, demotion, and discipline of employees or resignation of employees who have a contractual commitment to the board as permitted by 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia. We have a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Dr. Meyer. A second? Second. Second by Ms. Shelley. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposes? Hearing none, the motion carries 7-0. We are in closed session. A motion to re-enter open session. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Dr. Meyer. Do we have a second? Second to enter open session? Second. Second by Ms. Shelley. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposes? <coughs> Hearing none, motion carries 7-0. Certification of closed meeting. Whereas the Spotsylvania County School Board has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act and whereas Section 2.2-3711 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this school board that such a closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Spotsylvania County School Board hereby certifies that, to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under this chapter and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting. We have a motion. Moved by, by Mr. Blaine, seconded by... Uh, Ms. Gramp. Uh, roll call vote, starting with Ms. Shelley. 
Shelley, aye. Meyer, aye. Blaylock, aye. Braswell, aye. Boyg, aye. Blaine, aye. Gramp, aye. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, Dr. Martin. Motion for closed session is that the school board accepts the recommendation of the superintendent for personnel appointments, assignments, transfers, resignations, retirements, the request for extended leave for the 2016-17 school year, and the reappointment of support employees and administrators for the 2016-17 school year as presented in closed meeting and permitted by Section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia. Do we have a motion for the superintendent's recommendation? I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Shelley, seconded by Ms. Blaylock. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? Hearing none, motion carries 7-0. Uh, motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Ms. Grant moves to adjourn, seconded by Dr. Meyer. All in favor? Aye. Any opposes? <laughs> Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned.